OD6 continued to make impressive progress with exploration for rare earths across its tenement in districts near Esperance in Western Australia in 2023. Joining me today to discuss is Managing Director and CEO, Brett Hazelden. Brett, great to see you. Thanks for having us, Chris. Brett, looking back at 2023, give us some of the key highlights. So lots of things to talk about there, but let's just hit the high notes. So we did put out Australia's largest and highest grade resource, and that was using a thousand parts per million total rare earth oxide grade. So that's 344 million tonnes of uh, 1,308 ppm total rare earth oxide. So that's the biggest in Australia, and it's sort of rivaling some of the ones that are globally out there as well. So it's a massive rare earth um, province that we've uncovered, and we sort of only just started um, expanding on that as well. So plenty of upside there. Uh, we've also started on the metallurgical results in conjunction with ANSTO. Uh, they continue to be strong. They can continue to show that we can leach it using acids and uh, that we can get really good recoveries of anywhere between 50 to 80 percent and averaging about that 60 percent which is probably up on the higher end of where the industry averages are so from that point of view uh two really good highlights for 2023 and uh, looking forward to more this year and you've touched on metallurgical testing which has confirmed low levels of acid consumption in leaching and recovery process what would that mean for a future production scenario yeah, so what we're looking is using either hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid generally our focus is on hydrochloric acid uh, the hydrochloric acid gets us higher recoveries, um, costs you a little bit more in terms of acid usage, but um, you also, because of the higher recoveries, getting higher revenue, and that pays itself over, uh, off a few times over. So from that point of view, we're, we're really happy with uh, where that's looking in terms of uh, recovery. In terms of what does it mean for economics, um, look out a view on this, and we put it out into the market as well with one of our slides during the AGM presentation. Um, at the key value drivers of where we see these play-hosted rare earths, you, you really need grades above a 1,000 parts per million trio, your mag rare earth content above 20% um, mag rare earth. Your treatment rates need to be four or five million tonnes per annum, which is where the analysts are sort of looking at things. Uh, and a mine life, obviously, 20 years plus. So suddenly you've got to have a resource size of 150 million tonnes and a recovery of 50%. So that's where it all sort of fits in terms of future production scenarios. That's where the revenues looks highest. And in terms of metallurgy and asset consumption, uh, the asset obviously pays for uh, a fair bit of extra revenue and uh, hopefully extra profit as well. In November, OD6 outlined new basin areas at Splinter Rock, thanks in part to the CSIRO with which the company has an ongoing research relationship. How has that relationship benefited OD6 and exploration efforts to date? Yeah, so when we first were out there and when we first listed the company uh, over 18 months ago, we sort of only had some historic drilling that was done out there. Uh, we flew on a million dollar electromagnetic survey. Um, so that was really important to us. And then we needed the CSIRO to actually really process that data um, to actually understand it. So the first drill campaign we did was a bit hit and missed in terms we didn't have that data. So it was just really hopefully hitting the good spots, which is what we did. And then with the data that CSIRO has then provided in terms of the reprocessed imagery, um, we're now getting 90% and above success rates on all the drill holes that we're hitting. And we've identified where all the clay basins are, which is where we could assume uh, all the rare earths are actually being held. So we've got a massive area now. Um, and uh, for what we're now targeting is we're trying to target with CSIRO where the better zones are, both in terms of thickness uh, of grade. So it tells us the thickness of, um, not grade, but thicknesses of the ore body, but also the thicknesses of the overburden as well. So it allows us just to uh, be a little bit more pragmatic about where we focus on and where we think the most uh, economic resources might be going forward. And uh, this year's drill program, again, focuses on a couple of new areas that we're calling tight head and loose head. Um, that we haven't targeted before, but it also will be targeting infill drilling as well. And though Splinter Rock seems to have been the star of the show in 2023, OD6 also completed a reconnaissance drilling campaign at Grass Patch. What are the next steps for this project? Yeah, so Grass Patch results were great. Um, Splinter Rock's obviously excellent, uh, Australia's best in terms of grade and size and resource. Um, so Grass Patch has taken a little bit of a backseat for us. That said, the grades were good, the thicknesses were good, and we're looking forward to getting some... Uh, metallurgy results very, very shortly from ANSTO as well. So from that point of view, uh, it would probably be some people's uh, number one project. But for us, um, it's probably number two, obviously, because of Splinter Rock. But uh, what we've also been doing in conjunction with CSIRO and a couple of the others is there's been some deeper conductors that we're just sort of having a bit of a look at um, internally to see is there a copper or nickel deposit potentially in that area as well in addition to both the rare earths. So 
Um, that's uh, something that we'll sort of speak more about as we go through 2024, but um, something that might be exciting for Grass Patch uh, in conjunction with the, the rare earths. And Brett, 2023 was the hottest year on record. Does this reinforce the urgency and need for rare earth projects such as Splinter Rock to come online as the world heads towards net zero emissions and decarbonisation? Yeah, so the decarbonisation uh, rhetoric that's being put out there by the politicians is obviously trying to hit it as quickly as you can. Uh, it's interesting that nickel prices have dropped off and a few of the other ones. Um, it makes you wonder how we're going to achieve some of these targets and achieving some of those targets will actually revolve, will involve rare earths. And what rare earths really do is it, um, it goes into your wind turbines, your electric vehicles, but it goes into somewhere between two to $4 trillion worth of other goods as well, like white goods, air conditioners, phones, etc. So they're all using it to make uh, those devices more energy efficient, last longer, go further, all those type of things. So it's it's a really important uh, thing for decarbonisation and uh, key drivers there. Um, we've also seen, similar to nickel and others, uh, prices fall back in the last 12 months from some of the highs. So we've seen it, uh, the NDPR prices drop from about 120 bucks to $60 per tonne. But if you look at the forecast need for the metals in general, and not just rare earths, but copper, nickel, you name it, um, they're all forecast to be double where they are now, if not more. Uh, and uh, some of the forecasters in rare earths are forecasting $200 a kilo uh, compared to the current price of $60 a kilo for NDPR. So look, there's a lot of upside there, I think, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a few um, price shocks over the next um, 12 to 18 months as well. And looking forward, where would you like to see OD6 six to 12 months from now? Yeah, so this year or the next... Uh, six to 12 months, uh, we're looking for a bigger resource upgrade. So we've already got a big resource. Uh, we're looking to increase that considerably based on the drilling that was completed late last year. And then we're doing a lot more drilling again this year. So we'll expect that to grow probably one size and then bigger again. And it'll probably be competing with um, the likes of Cerro Verde and some of the really big resources that are seen in South America, uh, both in terms of size and grade. Um, the only one that's probably better than us in our opinion at the moment is probably Meteoric with a little bit higher grade. But look, a few more other challenges uh, that are different uh, with meteorite compared to ourselves. Uh, Met results, uh, we've got a whole heap of work at ANSTO at the moment. Um, we we're hoping to get it back in just before Christmas, but uh, didn't quite get all the samples and assays uh, back from that point of view. Um, so we're looking to put those out there and a bit whole heap more metallurgical work in terms of assays, recoveries, re and, you know, impurity removals, et cetera, and also process optimization. So 2024 will be a big metallurgy year and also a big resource year in terms of upgrading size as well. Uh, in, in terms of infill drilling, we'll be doing some infill drilling uh, at our current prospects at Centre and Prospect and probably a couple of the other prospects as well. But also we just wanna make sure that we're not missing uh, tight head or loose head in terms of uh, making sure there's not a bigger and better project out there that we should be targeting as the first uh, cab off the rank. So that's all big. Uh, and what does it all lead into uh, towards the end of the year or the second half of 2024? We'll be looking at putting out a scoping study that will probably tie all together these things together. We'll have an indicated and inferred resource that will allow us to then report financials as well. And I think that's really what the market's uh, also hanging out for as well. We, we know we're big, we know we've got uh, good metallurgy. Now the question is, um, is it profitable and how profitable will it be? That was Managing Director and CEO of OD6 Metals, Brett Hazelden. Brett, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for your time, Chris.